someone burnt down your home, killed your family member, and then you had to pay them for 100 years. So we're simply saying, hey, if they are a survivor or a descendant of someone who was a victim of the massacre, they shouldn't have to pay taxes to the city, the county, and the state that destroyed them and, and, and stopped them from getting what they deserve for the last 100 years. Demario, it is so great to see you. You are an attorney who is really putting on the forefront the issue of the Tulsa survivors and also the issue of reparations. But for this moment, you are the man who's taking two of the Tulsa massacre survivors from Black Wall Street that are 108 years old, if I believe, to Washington to get the dual citizenship to Ghana at the Ghanaian embassy. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. I mean, a couple, couple of minor modifications. Mother Fletcher is 108 years old and she's traveling there with her younger brother, who we call Uncle Red, Hughes Van Ellis, who's 102 years old. So between oh my gosh. Years, the 210 years are, are traveling there. And this was something that, you know, to their family, uh, their family, particularly their uh, mother, mother Fletcher's grandson, Ike Howard, mm -hmm connected them last year and they went to Ghana. These people went to Ghana at 107 and 101 years old and they loved it over there. They spent about nine or 10 days and they fell in love with Ghana. And they talked about, when I talked to them about it, was that they got treated like whole people. They got mm -hmm. treated with respect from a foreign government. Yeah, They had never been before the type of respect they never received from their own government and yeah. from the city of Tulsa. And then- yeah. They have still worked with the Ghanaian uh, ambassador, Ambassador Bennett, mm -hmm. and they said they wanted to bestow citizenship on them. And, and of course, I had to go. Wow. You know, I had to go and be with them, but I, I give all credit to their, mm -hmm. to their family for really being at the forefront of it. So the crazy thing is, I mean, it's hard to travel, just even just driving, then flying. I'm just thinking about across country alone from Washington to Los Angeles. It's a lot. But yeah. think about traveling from Oklahoma, from Tulsa, Oklahoma to, to Ghana. That's a long journey. Well, actually, for... actually, uh, 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 April, Uncle Red lives in Denver. So he fly, he flew to Tulsa, then to fly to Ghana. And, and think about today, we're talking about traveling. You know, that's why we're happy at the Justice for Greenwood Foundation. We're mm -hmm. happy that we can help provide some of the travel expenses wow, okay. uh, for, for them. When they travel, it's not just them either, right? They got to mm -hmm. travel with a caretaker, yeah, children, they, and they're 108, 102 years old. Now, I mean, you know, 108, 102 years old, and they're traveling here to DC, going to spend a couple of days in DC so they can get their citizenship and 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 just still very vibrant. And Uncle Red, as as you probably know, April said he's not he's living to 100, whatever it takes for him to get justice for Greenwood. If he got to live to 130, that's what he's going to do. And when you talk about justice for Greenwood, you're talking about the reparations, the money that's owed and the build back probably because the Greenwood district was over 40 blocks. Now it's a half a block squeezed right. in right. under an overpass. Sque right. And this, we're talking about black wealth over 40 blocks. It's now right. squeezed into a half a block under right. an overpass, pushed in by a, a research center for the University of Oklahoma and a minor uh, league baseball field. Right. That's crazy. Right. That is crazy. Absolutely. And yeah, so and you're looking for the reparations that's still under discussion and and in the courts, correct? It's still in the courts. We're still fighting it. Well, we have several lawsuits going. The main one is our public nuisance litigation, which is basically a reparations case. We're saying yeah. that, the, that you said the build back. We want the 40 blocks built back up. We want uh, people to get the, the mental health training yeah. services they need. We want an abatement of taxes. Think about this, April. Now, you, someone burnt down your home, killed your family members, and then you had to pay them for 100 years. So we're simply saying, hey, if they are a survivor or a descendant of someone who was a victim of the massacre, they shouldn't have to pay taxes to the city, the county, and the state that destroyed them and, and, and stopped them from getting what they deserve for the last 100 years. I mean, that makes perfect sense, right, April? That's, that makes perfect sense. You're preaching to the choir. But anyway, as a journalist, I shouldn't have said that. But yeah, you're <laughs> preaching to the choir. But you also forgot when they burned down their homes and their establishments, their businesses that were very profitable, yeah. they took their income. That's and then right. in turn, they still had to pay. That's so right. all of that plus taking uh, right. the way they generate money. Now, yeah. with this said, uh, we understand my soror also called me, A.J. Johnson, who is now saying that she lives in Ghana 
And this is like her secondary home, the United States. And she's always there. She's going to be there along with the vice president of the United States. Um, this is a big deal. But let me ask you this. Is it, are they moving or, or not moving, but are they becoming dual citizens because of what happened? Or is it because they just loved Ghana so much? They love Ghana so much. Now, I'm never going to speak and say that if Uncle Red wouldn't decide, hey, I'm just going to go over there and spend spend extended time on Mother Fletcher, because they will do that. Uh, but I think this was just, they love Ghana so much. And they love the they love the love and the respect that they believe they've received from the Ghanaian government as a governmental entity, right? And that's the type of thing that they wanted to have happen here in the state of Oklahoma, the city, the county, and even the federal government. We are very appreciative of the VP Kamala Harris, who uh, met with our clients uh, back in May of 2021 and President Biden. But we still want to see policy. We still yeah. want to see an executive order that says these people are owed actual resources and those resources of given. So we are appreciative of the support. We're appreciative of them being, they've been extremely pleasant, but we want to still take the next step. We want to see them actually put some dollars and resources into the black community and into the, the families of those who suffered the massacre. We simply say, I was with Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee on Saturday. She was here in Tulsa. And she had just got back from Austria dealing with some things dealing with the uh, Ukraine-Russian war. Yeah. And she made the point. And she had the Ukraine flag. And she said, I make the point. If, if we can give everything that we're doing to Ukraine, then we can give to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Uncle Red, and, uh, and uh, Mother Fletcher, and Mother Randall. And I think that's the point we want to make. We want more than just handshakes. We want more than just photo ops. We want policy, laws, and resources that come into the pockets and the communities where we live. So this, listening to the conversation that you are having with me, listening to the conversation that you had with Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, who's also uh, was the point person last year uh, to push for reparations, uh, for the study for reparations, it almost seems like this is more of a significant step for these centenarians who are survivors of the Tulsa massacre in their move uh, to become dual citizens because of uh, the search for restoration in no this question. moment. No question. Yeah. You think about the great W.E.B. Du Bois, right? You yeah. Know, his, most, most people know, I'm sure most of your audience knows, that after decades and decades of fighting here in America, found an NAACP and all the great things he did, he moved to Ghana. Mm. He moved to Ghana, you know, because- And he's buried person. there, right? He's buried in Ghana. Yeah. He's buried in Ghana. And I think, you know, the, the Ghanaian government has made a, 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 cert, a concerted push to, to invite African-Americans back to say, come and stand with us. We want to stand with you and let's build up a Black African homeland that we all can be free, proud, and prosperous. And I think that is what we're hoping to happen for our survivors, if not just from a physical standpoint, but mentally and spiritually, they can feel a part of that, even if they don't have to get back there. You know, who knows if they're going to go back there, 108, 102. But I don't buy, I don't buy, I don't bet against them, you, especially Uncle Ray, right? He survived the massacre and he survived World War II as a combat veteran. So, hey, you know. Uncle Red, come on, Uncle Red. <laughs> well, Demario Solomon, it's always great to talk to you. Thank you. And, um, this dual citizenship thing is a big deal, uh, not just for them, but many Americans are finding their way to Ghana now. I mean, you know, not just A.J. Johnson. We saw Dave Chappelle. We're seeing so many people who keep traveling to Africa. And it's not just for the new year, you know, because I hear already. And what are we? We in, we're in February, March. They say it's already sold out for the new years for 2024 wow. that America. Yeah. I'm just hearing this. It said, you better make your, your decision if you're coming uh, to Ghana uh, now, because it's pretty much sold out, but either way, um, this is a big deal. And we thank you for talking. Uh, thank you so much. appreciate you.